Well, thank you very much, uh, Kurt, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, it's great to be here in Anaheim and uh, at this great place. And he was showing off, of course, on the way up on the elevator of how many thousands of beds they have here and how <laughs> tourism is booming here and uh, all of those things. So I'm so happy that your city is doing well and i um, uh, also very happy that you have a rainy day fund here in this city which, of course, is a very important fact, and this is the reason why I'm here today, to talk a little bit about that, uh, talk about the budget. As you know that I have uh, announced my budget uh, for 2007, 2000, I mean 2008, 2009, uh, on January 10th, and uh, we are having $14.5 billion of deficit, and this is, of course, uh, not a good situation for the state of California, and I made it very clear then that it only has partially to do because of the economy, but it has mostly to do because uh, we don't have a system in place where the spending and uh, the revenues line are together. So that sometimes when the revenues level off and the spending formulas continue, and sometimes they are part, you know, 10, 12 billion dollars. And uh, so what we have to do is we have to fix that system. Uh, we have to do three things, as I've said to the legislators, and in my budget address, we have to go and, uh, first of all, make mid-year cuts because we have recognized that, that this year, right now, we are spending $600 million uh, a month more than we are taking in in our state. And so we have to make mid-year cuts, which the legislators have done a great job. Within 45 days, under Proposition 58, they have to make those cuts, and they came in one week early, as a matter of fact, so which was terrific. It showed again to the financial community uh, that they are very important to give us good credit rating, that, uh, you know, we have our act together and that we act appropriately. And now the second step out of the three steps is that we have to work out the budget uh, for the year 2008-2009 and uh, have to make uh, certain cuts or not spend as much as the spending formulas require us to do. And the third step is, is to actually redo the system and to, to uh, come up with a system that is really coherent and that really works so that we don't get into this situation in the first place. And what I mean by that is, is that we know when we look back, you know that the economy always goes up and it comes down. It goes up and it goes down. So there's no surprise in that. I mean, it's in the 40 years that I've been here in America, it has happened five, six times, exactly that. And that means also revenues go up and down. But uh, do we prepare ourselves for that is really the question. Well, the state of California is not prepared for that. As a matter of fact, every time in our revenues surge, then we grab all of that money, the state of California spends it all. I mean, our, our legislators love to spend money, and they cannot hold on to some of that money and put it in a rainy day fund, nor do we have a mechanism in place as far as that goes either. And then when we have a leveling off of the revenues, which we have right now, we don't have a decrease in revenues. We have a leveling off in revenues. That means that instead of 6% revenue increase that we anticipated, we only have 1% increase. So it's leveling off, not going down, leveling off. But our spending formula is requiring us to spend almost 8% more this year. So what do we do? Now we have to make cuts in all of the, those programs. If we would have had a rainy day fund put aside, we can now go and take that money and supplement the shortfall on revenues. And therefore, we would not have to go and make cuts in health care. We wouldn't have to make those kind of cuts for prisons, law enforcement, education, and so on. And people are out there saying, why do you cut prisons? I say, well, that's all of the money that we have. We have $96 billion in revenues this year, and that's all we can spend. I cannot create more money. It's all we have. The federal government can print more money. California can't. That's, we are not that fortunate. So, therefore, $96 billion is what we have and not a dollar more. So, therefore, that's all we can give you. We have to, therefore, make a little bit of reduction on education, a reduction on law enforcement, a reduction on prison, a reduction on health care, and all of those kind of things. And so people are up in arms about it. They're mad. I'm angry, too, about it because I don't have that extra money and we don't have that rainy day fund set aside. I'm angry that we have to make the uh, reductions in funding for education. I think that the people of California deserve much better. I don't think that it is a good idea to send these people, vulnerable citizens and children, on a roller coaster ride. But that's what we have under this current system. Now, I have 
tried several times to change the system and to reform our budget. As a matter of fact, in 2003, when we had the recall, the people sent me to Sacramento to do exactly that, to create change. And I wanted to change the system, but it was voted down by the legislators. The Senate voted it right down because that system that I recommended was let's put some money aside for the rainy day fund. Let's not spend all the money. It did not fly. Then I went to the people in 2005, and again I tried. And I asked the people to change the system. It didn't go. It didn't fly either. As you know, there was millions and millions of dollars spent against that idea. It became always in a huge battle out there and all this. But the idea was to go and change the system that has failed the people of California over and over and over. Every time we have a, a downturn, we don't have enough money. Now, what have uh, previous governors done? Some of them have raised taxes. Now, I happen to be against raising taxes. I don't think that every time that we are short on revenues, we should raise taxes because it's not the fault of the people that we are short on money. It's the fault of the legislators and the governor that we are short on money because if we would put, that, like I said, the rainy day fund aside and if we will manage our money better, like, for instance, Kurt Brinkle is doing here in Anaheim, he has money set aside. If there's an emergency, he has the extra money. Then we would have that money to supplement. And so, therefore, it's not the people's fault to go and punish the people. It's the same if the, if the lending corporations now say, wait a minute, we have a major crisis all over the United States. We are short the money. I think that we've screwed up a little bit. Why don't we raise the interest rate of all the, the people out there? their homes. So all of a sudden you pay 7% on your interest rate, and now they're saying, now from now on you have to pay 9%. It's not fair. It's not their fault that they've screwed up. So therefore I say that should be out of the question. I think what we should do is, and what I recommended is for us to solve this problem, to sit down, Democrats and Republicans, and to really work out a system like other states have or like Anaheim has, and so many other cities have, where we have this uh, kind of a budget system that's coherent. Now, I have brought some charts here so you understand what I'm talking about here. And um, I understand that budget is always kind of one of those very difficult things to do. As a matter of fact, someone once said that the balance of budget is like going to heaven, you know, that everyone wants to do it, but no one wants to do what it takes to get there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so... Uh, this is why I understand, you know, uh, in Sacramento we have the same problem. <laughs> they just don't want to do what it takes to get there, but they all want to go to heaven. Uh, here is uh, the green line represents the revenues. The yellow line represents the spending. As you can see here, those two lines are not really lined up at all. They're totally independent. So when the economy uh, flattens and the revenues come in, flat and not increasing at all, the spending continues to increase. And that is the big problem that we have. Now, when I came into office in 2003, the revenues went up and the economy was good and the spending went up. But now, look what happens here. Now the economy is leveling off again, but the revenues continue. And we're talking about the separation, like I said, to $11 million. Now, if we, if we would have had a budget system in place the kind of reform that I'm talking about, if we would have had those reforms in place 10 years ago, you see how the lines come more together, not perfectly together, but they come together more better, and it was, uh, you get only out of whack maybe two, three billion dollars, rather than 14 and a half billion dollars. Here you, you see, this is what's going to happen. Here's the revenues, the green line, and here's the spending formulas. Now, there's a the difference between one and the other, $10 billion, $11 billion. Now, here is if we do budget reform, those lines come together. If we would have had it 10 years ago, those lines would have been much more together. And now, look at this, how those lines come together. So this is why I'm recommending budget reform as quickly as possible. Now, why is it important for our legislators to sit down right away and to work on those things on a budget? It's because it takes months and months and months for cuts to take effect. I mean, as a matter of fact, we have, we're short on revenues. Here's my 
budget director Mike Jeunesse, Mike stand up. So they see the man, the genius behind the numbers. Um, but uh, let me just tell you that it is very important that we get to work right away because Mike would tell you that it takes months in order to, for the, cut, for the uh, cuts to take effect. In, for instance, in healthcare, we can't just cut from one month to the next because uh, the federal laws that will stop us from doing that. Prison reform, if you want to lay off prison guards, it would take you nine months, up to nine months to, to, to go and lay off those prison guards. In education, we have seen this year what happens in education. Right now, we are over-appropriating our schools by $1 billion. It was $1.4 billion, the over-appropriation, but we couldn't go and cut education the $1.4 billion because it wouldn't be fair because they already have paid out that money. They already hired the teachers. A lot of this money is already obligated and it's already, you know, being spent a lot of it. So, therefore, we couldn't do that. So now we only cut $400 million rather than $1.4 billion. We left $1 billion over appropriation for public schools. So this is why it is so difficult to make those cuts. That's why it's important for the legislators to come in and to start talking and negotiating now. That is the important thing. So I just want to tell you that it is a, uh, a very, very difficult issue. Because for decades, California has lived with this system, a system that has failed the people over and over again. But I think, even though they could not agree on a budget system that is good, that works for all these decades, I personally believe that this year we can do it. I've seen in the last few years the legislators coming together, Democrats and Republicans, even though different philosophies, different ways of thinking in many ways, but there's a willingness in the capital to work together and to make this work. I've had Democratic legislative leaders come to me and say, I know we have a problem here. We have to work on that. After Easter, we get to work on this. I've Republican leaders come to me and say the same thing. So I think there is a willingness there. And I'm obviously because Democratic leaders think differently than Republicans, there has to be a compromise. And again, I think that's possible because we've compromised on a lot of other, uh, other issues. You know, there will be talk about revenues, there will be talk about cuts, there will be talk about reforming the system, there will be... I have made it very clear that everything is on the table and we ought to look at all the different ideas. They know where I come from, that I'm against raising taxes, they know where I come from, that we have to go and reform the budget and all this. But I'm not the only one that is running the, the capital. I'm not the only one that is running the state of California. We, I have me and then there is my partners. The legislators, there's 120 of them that are up there, and we all will be starting to talk about it. But I can guarantee you that we're going to solve this problem this year once and for all. And I also want to guarantee you that, our, that California is going to be okay, even though even you turn on the news, you always hear bad news and negative news, how people get laid off and how this crisis and that crisis and they had to take over birth turns and the you know, federal government had to come in and bail them out and all of those kind of things. California is strong because we have hardworking people. We have a lot of creative minds, but we are so diversified also. If you think about the different economies that we have in California, I mean, from Silicon Valley, that economy, the high-tech economy, to the Central Valley, agriculture, to Los Angeles, we have the entertainment business, biotechnology down in San Diego. So that they, every area has its own economy, and that's the power of this state. It's a tremendous power which other places don't have. I mean, look at, when you look at the rest of the country. What are other states are known for? I mean, Iowa for corn, Texas, oil. <laughs> Florida, oranges, old people. I mean, you know, so, so I mean, they say, uh, you know, they say, the states are known for certain things, but California is known for so many great things. It's spectacular. So this is why I have total confidence in California. I have confidence in our process, in our people, my partners in the, in the, in the, in the capital, at the legislators. I have total confidence in that. So I just wanted to present that to you to kind of give you an idea of what the complications are and uh, which direction we try to go. And uh, now I want to open it up to some questions that you may have.
Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, please. Do we have a mic? Yeah. Governor, my name is Harry Sudhu. I'm councilman here. Um, if you won't get the uh, lead from your legislator to have the constitutional amendment passed, would you take this budget to the voters to have it approved? To take it to the... Voters to to the vote, it has to go to the voters anyway. Okay. I mean, I think that any any change in a constitution uh, in our budget system has to go to the voters. So, I mean, if we, for instance, make a change and say that we're going to put a certain amount of money aside for rainy day fund, that would affect other propositions like Proposition 98, right. and that has to be worked out with the education community and has to be worked out with all the stakeholders. Both of the parties have to work on that, and then we have to give it to the people, and then they will have to vote for it. So we would uh, go out and campaign for it together. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Governor, welcome to the 4th Supervisorial District of Orange County. I'm Chris Norby, 4th District Supervisor, also Chairman of the Orange County Transportation Authority. We have a road, the Foothill South Extension. We don't need money from the state for it. We can pay for it out of developer fees and bonds against future tolls. We appreciate your support for the completion of that toll road, but we've been turned down by the Coastal Commission on an 8-2 to two vote, and uh, right now we're kind of stuck between the state and the feds in terms of trying to get this road going forward. The Navy Department has approved, as you know, and we've got to deal with local legislators, uh, Congressman Sanchez's office, hopefully your office, and get support to complete uh, that needed highway. Any thoughts or any advice you can give us at this point in the process to complete the 241 Foothill Toll Road South? Well, as you know, that my vision, I made very clear, that I want California to be rebuilt. I want uh, us to invest in the future of California, that for four decades California has not built and has not built the kind of infrastructure that we need for the growth of the population. So the infrastructure that we have now is for 18 or 20 million people, but it's not for the 38 million people that we are very soon, and in another 10 years we will be 45 million people. So therefore, we, I, I mentioned that and talked about that in my State of the State address in January of 2006. I was very happy that Democrats and Republicans came together and approved $37 billion of infrastructure bonds, and then we put it on the ballot, and it won overwhelmingly. It was a huge victory for the people of California. Again, this was what I was talking about earlier, that both parties worked very well together to get this done. We didn't get everything done. We need, still need to build more courts. We still need to meet, uh, build the water infrastructure. We need to fix the Delta once and for all. We got to fix the ecosystem and the Delta, and we got to go and build uh, to the water delivery system, and also we need to go and build more above the ground and water storage, and above the ground and below the ground water storage. Very, very important, those things. We made a commitment also to, to go and rebuild our prisons and to add 53,000 new beds to our prisons. So I think we are going in the right direction. But I said also and made it very clear that we actually, this is only the foot in the door. That what we really need is $500 billion of infrastructure in California over the next 20 years. And I said that we would not be able to afford that through just public money. Public-private partnerships is the answer to do the rest of the work. And that toll road is a perfect example of that. And this is why I endorse the toll road because, thank you. And I know the environmentalists are sensitive about it, and they say it's going through a park. But the road has to go through somewhere. It has to always go through somewhere. If you look around the world, roads go through mountains, tunnels go through mountains, tunnels go underneath canals and down to the ocean, and all kinds of things. It has to go through somewhere, so we can't stop progress. I'm an environmentalist. I believe in protecting the environment. But when you need to build a road and when people get stuck in a traffic and we have bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, that creates an enormous amount, twice and three times the amount of greenhouse gases are being released and emitted into the atmosphere. So it's against the environment and it is promoting global warming. So I want to fight global warming, and the way you fight global warming is to speed up the traffic, to let the cars move so they emit less greenhouse gases. That's the way to do it. So this is why this is the real way of fighting global warming and protecting the environment. Okay. 
Yes, please. Governor, Lucy Dunn, Orange County Business Council. Nice to see you again and thrilled about your infrastructure comments. We, you know, we're your biggest fans on infrastructure, particularly your leadership in water roads, the 241. Back to the presentation today, if I may. You have a very strong business community here. I think Mike uh, Masalam might take exception to San Diego being the uh, biomedical uh, capital. We think in Orange County, with Edwards Life Sciences here, that we have a very strong biomedical industry, so my little commercial for them. But could you share with us, um, I, I think we totally agree with you that the California economy is fundamentally strong. What can the business community do to help you pass? I think you have two proposals here. What do you need us to do to help you succeed in this? Well, I think that the reason why I'm going up and down the state is, number one, I'm one of those governors that doesn't want to just sit around in Sacramento. Because Sacramento is in California, but California is a huge place. It's gigantic many wonderful cities and uh, great districts and everything. And so I like to go out to the people. I like to travel around to the different cities and talk to the people directly, look at them in the eye and say to them, I cannot guarantee you water 20 years from now. When you turn on your faucet, I don't know if there's water coming out. We need your support to put the pressure on the legislators and to reform our water system and to go and build the infrastructure that we need for the 37, 38 million people, and eventually 50 million people. So that's what I want to do is I want to look people in the eyes and say, this is what we need. We need to change, make those changes, but I need your help. So it's, it's, it's kind of like communicating with the people, letting them, you know, uh, be able to ask questions uh, about any of those things. And what we need from the people is their participation. The legislators need to hear. They can tell you as much as I can tell you that we all know how many phone calls came in, what the subject matter was of the phone calls, what are the people uh, most anxious about, what did they want the mo most about, what are their concerns, all of those things. We look at those things. They look at those things, the legislators. So I think it's important for everyone to go and let them know, call them, let them know that we need the water infrastructure, that we need the redistricting, they should all get behind the redistricting, and that we need budget reform so we have a coherent budget system once and for all so we don't have to go and send the children and the educators, the teachers and the education system on that roller coaster ride, these ups and downs where they have to hold on for dear life. It is not fair to them. Let's fix the system and give them a better system. And let's not always go and get into this situation where we run out of money. Then we have to ask the people for more tax money and raise the taxes. It's not the fair way of going. So this is why I need your help to participate in this process, for the mayors to participate, for everyone to participate, because the legislators will respond to you, because you're the ones that are voting them in, and they will have to respond to you what your wishes are. Sure. Any other questions? Very nice. Well, with that, I just want to say thank you very much for participating here. Love you all. Come back, and let's work together.